there's so much cruise advice out there, but today I wanted to talk about the cruise advice that is overrated and even the stuff that's underrated up next. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. I certainly share a lot of cruise advice here on our YouTube channel and across the internet. More than likely, you're going to run into quite a bit of cruise advice, whether it comes from a friend, someone you know, or just some blog or video out there. There's a lot to take in. And over the years, I've heard plenty of it myself. But today, I wanted to share the bits of cruise advice that really stand out as being either overrated or underrated. What do I mean by this? Well, essentially the overrated tips are things that either get repeated a lot or just simply sound good, but are in practice not that great. And then of course, there's the cruise ship advice that actually you might hear a lot, but you really should focus on much more than you might even think. Anyway, let's go through some of these and I'm gonna rely on you to keep me honest on this one. So let me know in the comments below the video if I missed any really important overrated or underrated cruise advice. Number one, underrated cruise advice, packing your bathing suit in your carry-on. So embarkation day. When you get on board your cruise ship on that first day, it's one of the best times to take advantage of the pool deck. And the reason being is that a lot of other people just simply don't have their bathing suits on them. And even if they do, they might be busy doing other things on board. Because the cruise ship pool deck and the activities on the pool deck can get very busy later in the cruise, this is one of the best times to take advantage of being up there. But more importantly, I would argue, is that there's a little bit of downtime on embarkation day. You get on board the ship, you get your food, and then you're kind of sitting around waiting because of course your staterooms may not be ready for a little bit. And even after that, once you get into your cabins, well, there's still a little bit of downtime until you actually sail away. Inevitably, I feel like a lot of people end up just kind of meandering around, exploring the ship certainly, but it's one of the best times to enjoy the pool deck without much of a line. In fact, if you're really interested in the water slides or the flow rider or any of those other pool deck attractions, the lines are always the least up here on embarkation day. So I think it's very underrated to bring your bathing suit with you to carry on because clearly, even though this advice has been out there for a while, people aren't doing it. Take advantage. Next on my list is a bit of overrated cruise advice, and that is not to overpack. And I kind of went through this on my own recently on my latest cruise. A lot of people will tell you don't overpack for your cruise. Take what you think you're going to need, put half of it, and then use that or something along those lines. And the idea of not overpacking makes a lot of sense when you're thinking about it at home in the idea that you don't want to bring more than you really need. In fact, when you go on your first Royal Caribbean cruise or cruise in general, you might be tempted to pack a lot of extra things. And that just means a lot of heft and whatnot, especially if you're flying, that could also mean extra fees for luggage and all that. And I totally understand that. But here's the reality of things. It's better to overpack than underpack in the sense of needing to have extra clothes. When I went to Norway, I was like, I'm gonna underpack purposefully because I wanna be as nimble as I can being in Europe. I don't wanna be lugging around luggage all that much. And I wanna be as efficient as I can. I'm gonna take this advice to heart. And I pretty much regretted it almost off the bat. Within about a day or two, I was starting to ration my clothing as if it was food and I was starving. It was like, I gotta make this last. And while I was able to do laundry, certainly, ultimately, I decided it was just not worthwhile. And certainly, I understand the impetus for not overpacking, but here's the reality. I'd much rather have an extra pair of shoes or a couple of outfits I don't wear than having to constantly be worried about, am I gonna have a clean shirt for tomorrow, which was the situation in Norway. Now, you might argue, well, Matt, not only did you underpack, you way underpack. There is gonna be a happy medium between the two of overpacking and underpacking. I really don't think overpacking is a big deal. Now, should you pack? a 1920 steamer type trunk to take a ton of stuff with you? No, I think you need to be realistic about what you need to bring with you. But the idea that you need to really be like cruising with a carry-on piece of luggage or something like that, I think it's just overrated cruise advice. Bring what you think you might need. And if you have a couple of extra clothes that you don't use on your cruise, not the end of the world. Next on my list also for overrated cruise advice is to bring your own drinks on board. And this might seem a little confusing as to why I put this on my overrated bit of cruise advice, but bringing your own drinks on board isn't something that Royal Caribbean allows you to do. You can bring up to 12 bottles or cans or whatever of non-alcoholic drinks on embarkation day and up to two bottles of wine per stateroom. Now, while there's no denying it will save you money, the reason why I made my list for overrated is the Sherpa effect that you have on embarkation day. 
it's a bit of a hassle to bring all that stuff with you. And because you have to keep it in your carry-on luggage, bring it up to your room, it just gets more cumbersome than it's worth. Now, I am also a big proponent of Royal Caribbean's drink packages because I just like the convenience of them. I get it. It costs money. Bringing your own drinks doesn't cost money, but it's obviously going to be a very limited amount. Now, if you can make it work, especially like on a three-night cruise, okay, that's a whole different story. But on a seven-night cruise, you're going to run out of it at some point, right? Especially if you're sharing with other people on board. And so that's why I feel like overall, I'd prefer to just invest in a drink package because I think it's going to be just more convenient and less hassle for bringing on board the ship. Maybe you disagree with me on this one, but I have it on my list. Some underrated cruise advice, something I talk about all the time, which is using a travel agent to book a cruise. I just can't convey in words how important it is to use a travel agent because it's not about just booking a cruise. Anybody can book a cruise. It's really not that difficult. The value in a good travel agent is everything that happens between when you book your cruise and when you actually go on your cruise. You're going to have questions, concerns. Royal Caribbean might even screw something up. It's so important and helpful to have a good travel agent that costs you nothing extra to use and helps you all along the way. Whether it's your first cruise or your fifth or your 500th cruise, there are always issues that come up. I still have questions and issues that come up. And so I love that I can just simply text my travel agent and ask them that question rather than have to deal with it on your own. Certainly I can pick up the phone and be able to maybe get an answer, but it's just so much easier to let someone else do it, especially if it costs you nothing extra to do it. Now, a lot of people will say, well, Matt, if you book through a travel agent, you can't change your own reservation. I want to be in charge of my own reservation. And I'd argue that is overrated. Being able to change your own reservation, totally overrated. Because what that really means is you cannot call Royal Caribbean directly and change your ship or your sail date or your cabin or add somebody in there which is true, except those things are boring and cumbersome and take time. Let someone else deal with that. You get to focus on the fun things like booking your drink packages, shore excursions, Wi-Fi, anything in the cruise planner, that's all still on you. But the boring mundane tasks, that is still on the travel agent. A bit of overrated cruise advice is don't book a cabin near an elevator. This is advice I've read every now and then, and it kind of made sense until you actually stay in a cabin near an elevator. And I'm going to tell you, it's actually a really good idea to book a cabin near an elevator. Now, I suspect this piece of advice may either come from one of two reasons. One, it was based on really old cruise ship advice in which the noise muffling of the elevator lobby was not as good as it is today. Or number two, it's about foot traffic. And basically, that if you're near an elevator lobby, there's more foot traffic nearby and that can be louder. Again, I think all this advice is rooted in the old school method of cruising in which ships were not that efficient with noise muffling. Now, that isn't to say that if you go into a Royal Caribbean cruise ship today, they're soundproof because they're not. But I really think the convenience of staying near an elevator lobby for your cabin is better than picking a cabin all the way at the end of the hallway, especially on Royal Caribbean's newer ships. Certainly, number one, the rooms are sufficiently far away from the elevator. You're not going to be hearing the dings from the elevator. And will you hear foot traffic? You can hear foot traffic at any given time with any room that you might have. At the end of the day, it's really dependent on the people walking by rather than just constantly being an issue. I would argue, having stayed in many cabins near the elevator lobbies, that it's not so much of an issue of being woken up or disturbed by people walking by your cabin. Occasionally, somebody does walk by and they are loud and boisterous. But again, that has happened no matter where the location of my cabin is. It's not constant, it's pretty quick, and it's never been a real issue to the point that I said, oh boy, I regret booking this cabin. But more importantly, I think it's more useful to book your cabin near the cruise ship elevators because of the convenience of being close by. On Royal Caribbean's Oasis and Quantum class ships especially, and I suspect this will apply to the Icon class as well, the distance when you book a room all the way at the end of the hallway is really long. Now, not to sound like the laziest person on earth, because, well, maybe I am, but that distance is a while. And it really makes getting back and forth to your cabin, especially if you just need to run back to your room to get something, a real hassle. Having a room near your elevator lobby is actually more advantageous than you might think. And it's the reason why when I book a cabin, I always ask for a cabin near an elevator as opposed to all the way at the end of the ship. Certainly, if you're on a Vision or a Radiance class ship, that distance really isn't so bad. But all things being equal, I do think the advice of not booking a cabin near an elevator is totally overrated. Speaking of totally overrated cruise advice, and that is buying the key. I have tried the key so many times, and every single time I come to the conclusion, the benefits sound better than they really are. And that's the reason why the key is overrated. If you read the policy of what the key includes, it sounds really good. But the reality is many of the benefits are just simply not worthwhile because 
They either sound better than they really are, or they're simply not that useful because you can get them on your own. You can get an early check-in time with the key, but you can get an early check-in time on your own as long as you get a check-in time right when the check-in window opens at 45 days. You get an Embarkation Day lunch in Chops. You can buy your own Chops Grill lunch on Embarkation Day. You get internet included with the key. You can buy the internet as well on your own, and it will be cheaper, by the way, than the key overall package. You get signature activity reserved times at the water slides or the rock wall or the floor rider, which is all true, except for the fact they're almost always at inconvenient times like around dinner or early morning. To be fair, I think there are a couple of perks that are worthwhile in the key, like priority tendering and the ability to drop off your carry-on luggage on embarkation day, going back to that tip earlier about being able to bring drinks on board, you could drop that off over there, which is really nice. But those two perks are very limited in when you'll actually be able to use them because let's remember, tendering is very rare these days. And that embarkation day perk is good for us just a couple of hours and your cabin's ready. So I just don't recommend the key. It sounds better than it is. It's gonna cost you more and you have to buy it for the entire duration of your cruise. And that's why I think it's overrated. Another piece of overrated cruise advice is bringing an over the door shoe organizer. Now we've done tips about some inside cabin hacks and ways to maximize your storage space on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Here's the reality. The over the door shoe organizer, which is aimed at going to like a dollar store, you buy one of these shoe organizers and you put it on your bathroom door in your cabin or even your main door, allows you to have more storage space for things like hats and shoes and jewelry and whatnot. But in 2023, I just don't think this holds up very well. Storage space in your cabin on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship, at least, has gotten a whole lot better than it used to be, you know, five, 10 years ago. And for this reason, I just think it's not worthwhile because I think that there's plenty of storage space on board. Now, if you're on one of Royal Caribbean's older ships, specifically the Vision, the Radiance, and maybe even the Voyager class ships, I get it. There can be a more limited space than, say, Harmony of the Seas or Odyssey of the Seas. But even when I've used this on older ships like Mariner of the Seas, I just find it's not as practical or useful as it makes it out to be. Certainly it is nice to be able to put some things in there, but unless you're maybe sharing a room with like three other people and you're all bringing tons of clothing because you overpacked and listened to my earlier tip, okay, you might have an argument there, but I think more often than not, this piece of cruise packing advice is totally overrated. Speaking of packing advice, here's an underrated cruise tip, and that is bringing a laundry hamper. Again, when we started looking at some cruise cabin hack tips, one of the more intriguing tips was to bring a laundry hamper with you to keep your dirty laundry organized. And I thought about it and I said, this seems like a silly one because who cares whether it's in a pile or in a laundry hamper. But the reality is it really made it a lot better. It was just nice having not just this pile of mountain of clothes, but an organized pile of mountain of clothes in the laundry hamper. It kept it from just overflowing. And it was really a good quality of life hack for your cruise cabin. So bringing a laundry hamper, especially if you can buy a really cheap one at a dollar store or Amazon is a really good idea. Let's go back to overrated cruise advice and that is buying an expensive camera or really any camera for your cruise. Now this may seem counterintuitive because you wanna record those memories of your cruise, but I'm gonna bet you that you have a fairly decent smartphone on you, whether it's an iPhone or an Android, as long as you have a smartphone with a camera that was built in the last, I don't know, three or five years, it is going to be good enough for your photos. Now, obviously, if you are a professional photographer, this device does not apply to you. I'm talking to the moms, the dads, the cousins, the aunts, and the grandpas out there because you want to capture the family moments. I do that as well. Your phone is going to do a good enough job when you consider the fact the photos you're going to be capturing are going to be shared primarily on social media or maybe texting each other, but you're not creating giant prints for murals or things you're going to put on your wall. You're taking nice photos. You're going to share them with your friends and family, probably on Facebook, and that's the end of it. You don't need to spend a lot of money or any money on an external camera when your phone camera is certainly good enough. While a DSLR camera will have better quality and more depth of field than certainly an iPhone camera for that matter, but I feel like for most people, again, taking family photos, here I am, here's everybody smiling with their bathing suits on. You know what? The phone camera is good enough because you're not creating prints from it, you're just sharing it online. So for that reason, I don't really think an expensive camera is worthwhile. Heck, I don't even bring my expensive camera anymore. I just rely on my iPhone because the photos are good enough because I'm using them for online productions. I'm not creating photo prints or blowing it up into giant resolutions. So I think given the fact the advances of iPhone cameras in the last you know, three, five years and the fact of what you're using it for, 
I just don't think it's worthwhile to buy an expensive camera for your cruise. And lastly, my bit of overrated, underrated cruise advice, we're gonna go with an underrated piece of cruise advice, and that is buying outlet adapters. So when I went to Europe, I bought a European cruise adapter because of course I'm going to Europe, I need to be able to plug my stuff in. And that was great. And certainly when Europe, that's really helpful, right? But having outlet adapters on your cruise ship is even more helpful because even on Royal Caribbean's newest cruise ships, the amount of outlets just never is enough. You're always gonna need more outlets to plug in all your different devices, your iPhone, your laptop, your hair dryer, all those things. And there are limited outlets that are there. I'm a really big fan of USB outlet extenders. Because remember, you can't bring a power strip on board, but you can bring USB hubs on to be able to extend the outlets that are there. And I've generally had pretty good luck. In fact, I've never had any of them ever confiscated for the ones that I brought. And it really makes such a big difference. So that way you don't have to play the game of, okay, which device can I unplug so I can plug this other device in for 10 more minutes? It's just not a fun thing. So buying outlet adapters is worth every penny. And even though it's on a lot of pieces of cruise advice, it's worth it every single time. Not enough people do it, so I'm gonna say it is underrated. So there you go, there's my list of, I don't know, 10 or so underrated and overrated pieces of cruise advice. Let me know in the comments again, which ones did I miss? What things do you think should be on this list? Let me know in the comments below. While you're down below our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube lets you know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.